we will be able to hit top speed in this video on the automat. Let's get the manual. Let's go one more time. What's up guys? Welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Martin and today I'm taking a look at my own BMW M3 G80 manual. And I'm going to test it against this, the M3 competition auto. So just to be clear, this is not going to be a general BMW M3 review because Max already did so. Go check it out if you haven't seen that one and then come back to this because I'm going in depth competition versus non-competition. That's going to be what it's all about today. Now, as you might know, this is my own BMW M3 and I went for the manual because I thought it would be more fun and more engaging. And today I'm going to find out whether I made the right choice. Now, these two cars are very, very different. They might look the same, but in the end, they are very, very different. Um, let's talk about those differences because there are slight optical changes when you get the competition instead of the non-competition. Now, in some countries, you can't even get a non-competition anymore. So they ditched the manual in the UK, for instance. So I think it's a, it's a shame because the manual, it has a lot going for it. First of all, it's cheaper. It's 5,000 euros cheaper here in the Netherlands. Okay, so let's talk about the optical changes. The M3 manual is a more classic recipe. It's something BMW has always done building M manuals. Um, now, M models have always gotten chrome badges and this more classic setup gets chrome badges. So this is how you can recognize an M3 being a manual non-competition. It's because of the chrome badge. Now let's go over to the other side and there we have an M3 competition badge which is always black and has a smaller competition bag badge underneath. Now there are, now this also goes for the front and these side scuttles also have different badges. So this is an M3 competition badge and when we go over to this side we have a chrome badge. Now this is something I don't like about the M3. You get this plastic piece as a side scuttle. Listen to that, listen to how cheap that is. That's not very nice. Now another difference between the two is that I didn't get the carbon exterior package and this does have the carbon exterior package. Now. As you can see, I have these vents or these rosters right here. And when you get the carbon exterior pack, you get these awesome carbon intakes. Now I have to admit, they do look quite freaking cool compared to the stupid plastic chicken wire I have on my car. Another difference is the mirror caps because you also get carbon fiber mirror caps when you get the carbon exterior pack. And the third difference is you get a carbon fiber spoiler and if you don't get the exterior pack, you get a black one. Same goes for the diffuser. I have a blacked out diffuser and the carbon exterior pack gets a carbon diffuser. Go figure. Now, as standard on the manual, you get chrome exhaust tips. Now. That's not really my taste, so I went for the optional black ones. But with the competition, they are always black. Now, another difference is that with mine, I got the tinted windows. And this one, being a BMW Netherlands press car, doesn't have tinted windows because they think it looks unfriendly. As standard, both on these, you get the carbon roof because it's just what makes an M3 but you can get an optional sunroof for a no, that's a no cost option, but I don't think you're going to make any friends doing that. 
within the M community because it's kind of ruining the car, right? Now, let's talk about that grill because as you might know, this has been the most controversial part about the current GATM3. Now, I think it looks awesome compared to the normal 3 Series. It really makes the M3 look like something totally different than a 3 Series. And I wanted to emphasize that by going for a sticker plate. I know it's not legal in Holland, but I wanted that front end to look very menacing. Now, this is the legal option. This is what it should look like, just a center license plate there. So uh, I'm not too sure for how long I'm going to keep this like this, but for the review, I thought it was cool to stick it on there and have it like this. Now, fun fact is that the M3 got the headlight unit from a 4 series and not a 3 series, which again, makes it look very different. Now let's talk about the body color. This is BMW individual Zanzibar 2. And this is Isle of Man green, which is the launch color, the launch spec for the M3. I think with the Zanzibar, you get a much more high quality paint job. Uh, it's a thicker paint actually. And it does make it look a bit more chunkier. I don't know, there's just those curves and hips and, and arches really stand out when you have the Zanzibar because it can get very like golden bright when it hits the sun, but also very dark brown when it's in the shade. And I really, really like that. Now, because the paint is so thick, it has so many layers, some of the driver's assistance are not available when you get an individual paint, like lane keep assist, which I think is amazing because I hate lane keep assist and I don't have it on my car. I'm so thankful for that. Now, another difference is that as standard, you get 18 inch on the front and 19 inch at the rear when you get a non-competition. But I went for the racetrack pack which means I get the competition wheels, but I have the black ones and these are the two-tone ones. And when you get the racetrack pack, you also get these carbon ceramics, which this one also has. You also get the M driver's pack, which means it will do 290. The M3 actually goes up to like 297 on the dials, which is actually 293 GPS. Now I have not tested the top speed of mine yet. I'm going to do that after this video has been made. Or maybe we will be able to hit top speed in this video on the Autobahn. Now, another difference is the key. If you pay a few hundred euros extra, you get this display key, which we know from the seven series and five series and so on. But I went for this simple key and decided to spend my money on options that would improve the car, not make it more of a show pony. Now, let's talk performance. Both have the S58 three liter bi-turbo inline six engine. This has 510 horsepower. That one has 480 horsepower. 650 newton meters, 550 newton meters. Now, as you might know, we have dynoed both cars, same fuel, same dyno. This did, or let's start with mine. This did 500 horsepower, 600 newton meters, which is quite amazing. But this competition, uh, I am afraid the difference is even bigger than it is claimed by BMW because this did 540 horsepower and over a little over 700 newton meters, which is astonishing. It's so, the difference is really quite big, but I'm going to talk about that while driving. But we also logged the turbo pressure. This did 1.4 bar of turbo pressure and this only 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2. But if you want to know more about all the dyno stuff, go check out the video in the top right corner. I think we're going to check out the interior. Now, 
both cars have the racetrack pack which means we have the carbon fiber seats um, you know that it's an m3 competition because it says so over there and because there is this gear lever instead of a manual gear lever and it says so right here m3 competition also featured on the m3 competition are these awesome carbon fiber shift pedals which i really like they do look a bit aftermarket -y for my taste but they are very very nice let's get driving which means we have to move the hulk for which i need my assistant max and it looks like i have a bit more time to talk about the weight because the manual of course is a bit lighter it's 25 kilos this is 1805 kilos this is 1780 so they are both really really heavy if you ask me especially compared to the last gen m3 f80 it's about 180 kilos but i wanted my m3 to be as light as possible which is m3 non-competition with the racetrack pack which because of the lighter brakes and the lighter seats is another 25 kilos lighter move away please now that's an opf sound now he's going to open the exhaust is it yeah that's it now that's pretty decent right now i have driven both cars i have listen to them very intensively and i think the competition is just a bit louder maybe it's because of the added turbo pressure but i don't know and let's test whether we can achieve the claimed zero to 100 time of 4.2 seconds for this manual versus a 3.9 for the competition okay so let's start it up and let's select m2 now that activates the exhaust and let's check out the setup now with the manual you get a shifting assistant as they call it and it's the auto rev match which i have turned on now all the other stuff max already talked about in earlier reviews so draggy is ready i'm ready and i think max is ready too let's get going Nice going, Max. Nice going. Oh man, I love doing this. Having these two cars together is just amazing. We've had so much fun today, just driving around, doing a few slides, and experiencing what the differences actually are driving it. Now we're just going to do a random launch. So I'm going to start with this car, and then I'm going to drive that car and do the same test. But He's going to launch control it. And now I am going to with my bare feet. Well, they're not bare, but. That was a horrible launch. That was a five second run. Oh man, I'm ashamed by that. But it's quite difficult because you really need to load up that rear axle because this new M differential can handle so much power. You tend to underestimate it. You tend to like do a 2000 to 3000 RPM pull, but you need to give it much more than that because it will kind of like stall as you just noticed. Let's try that again. Oh, it's so difficult. That's a five second run again. It's, it's really difficult, guys.
But in my defense, that was the first time I tried doing that because I've now done two and a half thousand kilometers in this car and you have to run it in for 2000 kilometers. So I've only had 500 kilometers up until now to really push the car. Um, and doing zero to 100 runs isn't something I tend to do every day. Oh, but I really have to get closer to that 4.2 number. So it's now a few days later and I was thinking, why do I have that much trouble launching this car properly? Well, when we had the interview with BMW M a few months ago, I asked them, is the manual version of the M3 going to have launch control? And they said, yes, it will have launch control. So I was over the moon, really happy. First BMW M car with a manual and launch control. Now with M cars, you always have to turn off the ESP completely to use launch control. So tried that, didn't get any launch control function working. So I decided let's get the manual the user manual not the gear shift manual um, and look for launch control and hey there it is launch control 163 and there we have it launch control explained for the competition um, manual manual no Nowhere, nothing about launch control with a manual. This morning I saw a video with a G80 M3. Thanks to the straight pipes, I now know how it works. You have to put the ESP system in NDM mode, which again is new. So let's give that a try and let's see if I can get a better zero to hundred time. Okay, so this is the first time I'm going to try it. As I said, this is my first attempt. Ooh, that's 4.4, that's more like it. Oh yes, <laughs> it works. I have no doubt that in perfect circumstances with perfect shifting you can get that 4.2 and it definitely helps as you saw me trying without launch control it's closer to 5 than 4 so um, it's not because the shifting isn't nice because BMW have done a great job making this a lot better than the manual shift in the F80 M3. It's a lot more, there's a lot more feel to it. It's a bit heavier, it's shorter, it's tighter. And I mean, it's not as good as like a Honda Civic Type R who have made a, gear, a manual gearbox to perfection. Porsche can do that as well. BMW, they've always had this rubbery feel to it. The rubbery feel is still there, but it's now there in a nice way. It's a nice gearbox for everyday driving. It's really easy to shift, to shift it quickly, and it's just really, really good. So that was it, back to the video. Okay, so let's switch to the competition with Draggy. If you want one of these, by the way, to check out the performance of your car or your friend's GTI who claims is doing fours to 100, go check it out in the top right corner. There you go, sir. It's quite hot out today. So that was a bit disappointing. Um, and I'm afraid this competition is going to show me how it's done. So let's put it into gear by hitting it to the right. No, this is not the right mode yet. This is sequential mode. Let's see what setup we are having. Sport, 
Sport. Sport and Sport Plus. Okay. Now I'm going to let Max overtake me. And let's see what this is like. The increase in performance is very, very big. Jesus Christ, this thing is a weapon. It's the torque is unbelievable compared to mine. It's like driving a tuned version of my car, which in essence it is. Jesus Christ, guys, this is quite amazing. <laughs> Man, this thing is a weapon. That they are so different these cars. They even sound different both in the interior and on the outside. It's amazing what BMW have done to make the two this different. Let's see if he can proper launch my car or <laughs> that's a lot more drama than with my run but okay launch control I yeah it's going into second because of that monstrous torque and goes to a hundred in 3.9 seconds now that's dead on factory claim that's amazing guys let's head over to the autobahn and see how the two will perform over there 100 to 200 times top speed and all that so here we are at the autobahn i'm going to start with the competition and then switch to my car and see what the difference is in terms of driving experience and 100 to 200 Accelerations. Oh man, this thing is so fast. Okay, Max is going to go in front of me and see when that Mazda is going out of the way, how much faster this actually is. I'm already gaining on it. I have to hold back. This is unbelievable. The difference, man. It's really, really big, guys. Here we go. Yeah, gaining, gaining. Ah, that, that, that is unbelievable. I mean, the shove you get in this one, you get like pushed into your seat. You just don't get that with, with mine, not this fiercely. Thankfully we both have carbon ceramics so we can really slam on those brakes without having fading issues or anything like that. Here we go again. Yeah, wow. No, 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 we're not going off. Let's go one more time. Ceramics. 
Now I have to say we have driven an M3 competition on the Autobahn with the M compound steel brakes which have been newly developed by BMW and they are awesome. They are much better than the old steel ones and there is nothing that can beat a carbon ceramic brake but those are really really good. So if you're not tracking your car or taking it to the Autobahn quite often, like we are, just go for the steel ones. Yeah, that initial go that this competition has is just amazing, amazing, unbelievable. to do a 100 to 200 run which I'm going to do now and after that we are going to switch cars and see what it's like to drive that manual on the Autobahn but this is mighty impressive now another difference between the two I forgot to tell you that is that I am running Pirelli P0s and this is on Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's and I do notice that the Michelins are a bit better. They are softer, they are quieter. And just a bit better, but normally I don't really like the P0's but in this case I do he wants to go to second okay <laughs> look at that yeah that's eight seconds 100 to 200 7.98 Let's find out what my manual, slightly handicapped M3 will do. So a 9.33 versus a 7.98. That's a big difference, guys. And to conclude, there is a very, very big difference between the non-competition and the competition. As we already suspected when we hit the dyno, but in real life, the difference maybe is even bigger when it comes to performance. But when it comes to driving fun, driving engagement, which I think should be the main thing with the M3, the manual is the way to go. It's just awesome.
thank you for watching hope to see you at the next one you can subscribe by hitting the big button right here you can check out this video or get go check out the pov reviews playlist thanks guys bye